Hey, I'm Johnny Palmer, and today I'm going to do a box opening of a Black Magic Ursa Pro 4.6K G2. I'm not normally a box opener, but I got a new toy, so I thought I should share this joy with the world. Back to camera two. So, here's the Ursa. First things first. You know what? I like the other camera more. Let's go back to that one. Rear camera. Loving OBS. So, what have we got here? It is in one of those plastic wrapped cases. Um, I don't have very long fingernails, and I don't like using my, uh, my, my modified teeth to open boxes. So, I'm going to pull out my trusty Balinese meat cleaver to get the plastic off. So, a gentle scrape down the side, because who knows, I might have to send this back one day. Wouldn't be the first time. Better put the meat cleaver away. It's a bit sharp. Plastic off. You can see the box here, can't you? Good. Okay, so what have we got? Okay, Black Magic, as always, have done a stunning job of their beautifully printed boxes. Open the box here. We have a yellow bit inside. That's quite cool. I like that. Lots of paperwork. Um, I don't normally read this stuff, but let's have a quick glance. They really do some excellent printing. And I love their I love their photography, actually. I hope that's using their equipment, not Panasonic or Sony gear. But they um, grade their um, content and photography beautifully. Software installer, hopefully won't need that. Um, a sticker that can go on my bike later, or my kid's bike. And then DaVinci Resolve Studio. I love that they throw in free software with their stuff. I find that impressive, especially because DaVinci Resolve is actually a pretty advanced piece of um, editing and grading software. Okay, a bit of styrofoam. This is good. Often we get these things and they come with these little styrofoam balls and they just go everywhere. Like they explode in your house and you can't get rid of the damn things. So that's quite nice. Okay, let's start with the boring bit first. Power supply, beautifully boxed in a gold cardboard box. Uh, not sure what that's for, figure that one out later. And then nice good chunky power supply with an IEC port, a four pin XLR, and they're using genuine Neutrix, which is which is good to see, good to see, because some of those um, import ones aren't so good and the, the little clippy bits often go wrong. So nice power supply, put that to one side. Again this, let's try and resolve that mystery later on, what that's for. Okay, the camera itself. Okay, it's nice. Um, it feels like it's aluminium cast, I believe. It's not as heavy as it looks, which is good, but it definitely feels solid. So flicking around here, we've got the uh, the rubber cover for the three pin XLR inputs, which is great. SDI output in the side, 12 volt out. That's very handy, actually. 12 volt in at the back. And we also have another SDI out, SDI in, and a reference in. Now, at Pitch and Virtual Venue, we use the Blackmagic Ursa Broadcast, which we love. They're fantastic. Great bit of gear. Love the colors, love the CCU, and excellent value for money. This one, at a glance, to me, looks very similar, but just not as long. Um, so I'm going to put the camera to one side now. We'll come back to that later. Onto my shelf here, next to my plant collection. And let's take out a bit more foam. That's it. So, yeah, not much else in there. Let's just go through the camera a bit more while I'm at it. On the bottom here, we've got four, five mounting holes for a plate or a presumably a um, VCT mount. The back is ready for a V-lock to go on, uh, and it has a series of what looks like about an M4 um, bolt fixing on the back there. Aha, that's what this is. I guess this is a power supply input for the um, for the V-lock plate at the back, I'm guessing, but I don't actually know in truth. I'm surprised there's not more accessories, though. Um, not that we need them, but one would expect there'd be a whole bag of stuff. Now, this is the EF mount one, which is fantastic because I love my EF lenses. We've got a lot of them, and I feel they're the kind of thing that if you buy them now, you're still going to use them in 20 years. Indeed, my 24 to 70 I've had for about seven or eight years now. When I pull that thing out and use it, it still feels like a really modern, great, fantastic photographic lens and brilliant for cinema use as well. But of course, EF lenses generally aren't par focal and generally, but not always, don't have motorized zooms. So we are very much using photography lenses on this camera. Fantastic for lock off or for cinema type work, but not good for live run and gun type stuff. All about application as I always say, but for what we're doing in our studios for a wide lock off, brilliant. We were gonna use a wide B4 lens, but we were just fine. We had to use really high end city lenses then, which were, which were crazy money and out of the kind of budgets we're working with. So using this kind of camera with some really high quality, probably f2.8 um, EF lenses. This is a really, really great solution. So 
Excited to get this. Looking forward to getting the CCU control in. Look at how the color matching is between this and the Ursa broadcasts. And also see how it compares up against the other things we use, such as uh, PMW 200 or even up against the prosumer stuff we occasionally drag out, like a 5D or an A7S. Um, overall, really happy. And um, oh, all the C300 we've also got. Try that too. Um, seems great. Or well, one thing, actually, I'm seeing here. There's some vents at the top with a fan behind. This absolutely does not look like something that would like any kind of rain on it. Whereas with the Canon and Sony stuff I've seen, well, you obviously wouldn't use it outdoors out of cover. Um, it does feel a bit like it probably take a few drops of water. This, not so much. Overall, though, feels like a great bit of gear. Um, nice, simple packaging. Um, slightly worrying lack of accessories. But I'm excited to use it. Thanks for watching.